five, Eden. But first, before we say too much, um, I want to make sure that this is showing up on Facebook. I'm going to check. I'm going to check my phone just real quick. There's nobody. I don't see any eyeballs just yet, which it takes a minute or two. But I just. Oh, yeah, we're on Facebook. We're good. OK, it's all it's all live. All right. Good morning. Good morning. And we're also on LinkedIn live as well, too. So. It's all good. But good morning. I am Heather Lyle, and I help business owners and entrepreneurs get crystal clear about what they need to grow and scale their business in order to be profitable in six weeks or less. And how do I do it? I focus on three major systems. First of all, designing a profitable marketing strategy, delivering an exceptional customer experience, which we're going to be talking about that today, and developing the systems you need to grow and scale your business. So again, this morning, we're going to be talking about how to deliver an exceptional customer experience. And joining me today, we have Eden Turrentine, a dear friend of mine back from Oklahoma. She has been working in the beauty and fashion industry, both luxury and contemporary. Eden, I took this directly from your website. So <laughs> anyway for, gosh, over 20 years. Her shop is called the Eden Boutique, and it's located in the cool, very hip, artsy area of Oklahoma City called the Paseo District. I love it. I know. And she is my go-to favorite place, hands down, to find the best pieces for my wardrobe. In fact, I just have to shout out here, you know, cute, cute shirt, cute, cute earrings. Of course, Eden's pretty cute too. But anyway, um, the reason why I wanted Eden to join me today is because this woman gets it when it comes to customer service and delivering that exceptional um, customer experience. And in fact, you know, the reason why I shop with her and I typically loathe shopping, it's not my jam, but is because she goes out of her way to make the experience easy for me. And we're going to talk about that. When it comes to new things that come in the door, she'll send me text messages. She'll communicate with me to let me know what's going on, what she thinks that I might like. And again, that whole piece about it makes it easy for me to buy from her. And we're all about making money. And how do we go about doing that? So Eden, I want you to tell us a little bit about you, what you do, and who you serve. Okay, well, as Heather said, I'm Eden Turrentine. Um, I've been down here in the Paseo for about four years. I recently moved to a new location, which was a great move for me in August. But I've been in the, um, as Heather said, the beauty and fashion world for really 30 plus years. 30 so, plus? Quite a while. Um, that'll date me, but yes. And I love it. It's my passion. Um, and it's something that excites me every day, which is what I think we all should strive for in our vocation. And I literally come to work every day excited about what the day's going to bring. Isn't that fun? Oh, it's great. I mean, and for me, a lot of it really, I do what I do because I love people. Mm -hmm. And for me, the return of engaging with my customers is worth more than the dollar amount in my business by far, by far. Absolutely. Well, and it shows. It absolutely shows. And there's some cute pieces behind you, just real quick. You've got some spring stuff coming in, don't you? Color. I think we're ready for it. And it's beautiful. We love color. And I think we're all kind of ready for a brighter horizon after this last year. So I've got, by the way, a big sale going on right now. <laughs> And off, I will plug that because we're bringing spring in because I think everyone's ready for fun, frivolity, color, and to move on into 21. As soon Absolutely. As yeah. Amen. Amen to moving on into 21. <laughs> so anyway, I wanted to kick off our conversation this morning with a stat that I heard. Um, I listen to podcasts all the time. And there's this business podcast that I listen to called Marketing Your Business, Marketing Your Business with Stu McLaren. And he was talking about the three foundational elements of a successful business and said this, and this is this is going to blow your mind, that business owners can triple the lifetime value of a customer if that customer has an incredible experience. Triple. And I I mean, that, that should be mind-blowing for people, okay? Now more than ever, given the pandemic, uh, the fact that we have so many choices. I mean, there's a bajillion choices within a mile of my house, a million choices between, within a mile of your house too, for that matter. And with the world moving online, businesses have got to step up their game when it comes to taking care of their customers. They just have, they've got to, or they're going to be a dinosaur, right? 
So let's talk about how you can do just that. Eden, how do you take care of your customers? And I know for you, it's about developing relationships. You love your people, but how do you do it? Well, my first thought is this. When someone crosses the threshold into my store, I almost look at it as though they're coming to my home. OK, mm -hmm. You're a guest, you have crossed the threshold into my home. So you um, are interested in what's happening here. Um, and so everything that happens to you from the minute you cross that doorway is important to me. Mm -hmm. That means I want you greeted. I want you engaged. I want you to feel comfortable. I want you to um, have fun. And at the end of the day, for me, with what I do in retail, I mean, let's be honest, it's not. Um, something cataclysmic brain surgery. It's about having fun. And when someone comes in, I, I want them to feel like uh, when they look around that it's a form of entertainment, you know, mm -hmm. and that this is a little bit of a departure from whatever's going on in their day or whether they were having a work lunch and it didn't go well or they had problems this morning before they got out of the house. I want them to come in and kind of let that just drift off from them and kind of come in here and feel special, attended to, and intrigued. Yeah. So when someone comes into your store, and we were talking, Eden and I were talking about this before we went on, before we went live, but I think it is so important, and you made the comment, you want to welcome people in. It's your home. You know, you're welcoming people in. And a friend of mine last week told me about a book, um, Oh, it was called Setting the Table with Danny Myers, the Shake Shack guy, CEO. He was a fine dining uh, restaurateur term Shake Shack. And he was talking about how, you know, when you when you come into my restaurant, you're you're mine. Like you're you're my person now and I'm going to take care of you. Wow. And I think if there's ways that people how how people need to do that. And you do that by welcoming people in. What else do you do? I mean, walk me through that customer experience. When someone comes to your shop, what are they going to experience? You know, my first my first question is usually what brings you down to Paseo or um, are you having lunch around here today? I think the kiss of death in any retail business or really any business is can I help you today? I think that that phrase should be X'd out on every level because it has no um, personal attention. It has no true interest in someone. So I really just want to know why they're here. I mean, I don't know when they walk in the door, if they're going to be here for two minutes, they're waiting on a reservation, say to go to Picasso's across the street, or they've um, seen something on my social media. So I'm kind of curious for me, what it, the main focus is, let me learn a little bit more about you. Let yeah. me learn more about you. So learning and asking questions without being overbearing, obviously, is the key. Begin to engage with someone by, by being curious about them, which potentially shows that you care why they walked in your door. Yeah, for sure. Um, how do you make it people, uh, how do you make it easy for people to buy from you? Talk about some of this tactics, the strategies that you use, especially this past year. I mean, the pandemic definitely right. changed the way how you inter interacted and engaged with your customers. Talk to us about what you've had to do this, pa this past year. The hustle has been real. <laughs> right. <laughs> talk to us about what you've actually done to make that experience easier. I use what I consider a best friend approach. In other words, you know, we may be, you may have only come into my store once or twice, but maybe we engaged and I learned a little bit more about you. And usually I'll ask you on the way out the door, whether, whether or not you made a purchase for me, would you like me to send you pictures um, and get their um, agreement upon that and get however, in whatever media way they would like me to uh, send it to them, whether it's email or text. And once they tell me, yeah, I would love that, then I, I become interested in, in focusing on maybe what their past purchases have been or what um, their lifestyle is and their sizes, obviously. And I literally take pictures right out of the box to customers and I will tell them, hey, this is in your, I've got this, this in your size. Just shoot me a text. I can put it back for you. Um, we deliver. Um, obviously, we do curbside pickup. But it, it's it's first to get their acknowledgement that I'm interested in, in, in serving their needs going forward in a way super easy for them. Because let's be honest, people are busy. Yeah. Work. Make it easy for people. If you make it easy for them, then um, that is, that's doing them a huge service right there rather than having to come to your door. Right. You know, once I send them pictures, 
we can go back and forth and follow up on sizing and all that. But it, it's if they would like that extra service, I think that's super important because it saves time and everyone wants something that saves them time. For sure. And and how you find out all of that is you listen to your customer. You know, I mean, I think it's interesting. I remember last year, you know, when I started working on my own and especially when the pandemic hit and I was working from home. I mean, I have a closet full of <laughs> of suits and professional attire. And I remember telling Eden, I was just like, okay, I'm working from home more. And so I don't need all of the, the ritzy glamour, you know, suits type stuff that I had before. And lo and behold, you know, she listened and lo and behold, the text messages that I would receive would have clothing that kind of matched what I said I wanted and what I what I needed, not what was easiest for you, but what was you listen to me and what the needs were of your customer. And so I just I think that's so critical. And, and again, so many businesses just gloss over it. It's like it's just easy for me, for me to send a group text or a group email that has all of this and it's not tailor made for me necessarily. Absolutely. And you know, another note that I would follow up with that is, is I also try to create value upon what I'm showing you. If I show you a top, I feel like it's kind of my responsibility to show you three different ways to wear it. For instance, yes. you're saying, can I, how, okay, explain to me even why I need this top. Well, you could wear it professionally this way. You could wear it on the weekend this way. You can wear it this season and this season. So therefore, when you buy something from me, you already know in your head and you feel like you've gotten an educated answer as to what you can do with it. Yes. I'm really a conduit of information. I, I go to market. Um, I follow the fashion trends. But at the end of the day, it, it's not magic. It's just what I do full time. And I still right. like doing it. So why not share that information with you? And it in, in, intrinsically creates value upon what you've got. Yeah, for sure. 100%. In fact, next week with some of my blogs and videos that I'm doing, we're I'm talking all about how to actually offer extreme value. And because it's like, you're the expert. I'm going to you because you know all about the fashion is I don't. I, I, that's not that's not what I do. You know, I'm a marketing person. So if you want to talk about that, I can tell you everything there. But when it comes to the fashion industry, you know, I go to you because I know that you're going to tell me, OK, Heather, like that black. I bought a black jumpsuit and you're like, OK, you can wear a jean jacket or you can wear this jacket. Yeah you can you can do more with it you offered extreme value to me you know and it's just again these are the things that business owners need to do in order to sustain the craziness of this past year well, to that too heather um within forming relationships within my business it's it's also a um part of honesty it's it's being honest with that client if if something you think is not going to serve them well and you have an alternative it's being honest with them it comes back to that best friend values if you if you're honest with people and really um explain to them why you think there's an option that's better for them mm -hmm. that creates honesty and honesty creates trust and yes. trust creates repeat clientele yes. so i emphasize that enough and i think honestly most women who shop with me, that's a lot of the reason they come back is because I'll tell them, you know, they'll come out of the dressing room and we'll discuss what they have on. And I can read their body language, how they feel in it. And if I sure. feel, don't feel it or it's not suiting their body, I'm like, you can do better than that. Let's move on. It's not about the quick sale. It's about the honesty and the trust that makes you want to come back. So then let me ask you this, because when we talk about when you spend the time, because it takes time to do what you do a lot of time when it comes to converting that to a sale are do you find that when you take the time to do what you're what you're what you do? I mean, I can tell you that for me, I mean, I know my own personal buying habits. And when I come to you, I'm going to be spending a lot more money, you know, at one time because you're giving me that you've listened You've communicated with me. You know, you've been honest with me. You've delivered exceptional value. And that that resonates at the register, too, for that matter. It does. It does. And, you know, it's interesting. I will even find myself sometimes dealing with a client and they're on the fence about something. And I will look at them and, and ask them again, asking more questions. If you don't feel good about this, let's move on. If your yeah. reaction is not 100% pretty much from the beginning, you don't need that because that doesn't, 
selling that one item to a customer just because I want to make that sale that day, I won't feel good about it. And at some point I, I feel they'll have buyer's remorse. Yeah. And creates again it may not be a bad feeling but it creates a feeling that mm, something just wasn't yeah so and that will create a, an atmosphere of maybe i don't want to go back in again because i made a mistake and my focus is i don't want you to make a mistake and i'm going to help you not make a mistake mm -hmm. i love that okay so let's wrap this up what is the one thing that one piece of advice that you would give to a business owner to help them step up their game when it comes to customer service Oh, gosh. I think, again, the best friend approach or how yeah. you want to be treated. I mean, we've, we've discussed situations where you've walked into stores and no one's talked to you. And I'm sure the staff in the store were actually, if you took them one by one, great people and their minds would probably be appalled that that's how they came across. Mm -hmm. To be self-aware, constantly self-aware of how you're being perceived by someone that walks across your doorway and and treating them how as a best friend because yeah. it creates um happiness with seeing you again yeah for sure i wrote down best friend values i love that and i think if there's one thing that anybody could get out of this little 15 minute video that we've created here it's what can you do to create those best friend values in your own business as well. So anyway, okay, thank you so much for joining me today. I so I appreciate it. It's been fun. So appreciate your time. Tell us just really quick, how can people find you online and in person as well? Okay, I'm on Instagram, Eden's OKC, and I'm also on Facebook. And of course I'm in the heart of the Paseo district. And um, I'm here Tuesday through Saturday. And um, we'd love to we'd love to help anyone or any of the people who maybe watch this and haven't experienced the store. And yeah, absolutely. OK. And your website, too. What's your website? EdensOKC.com. Perfect. 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 OK. So again, thanks for watching live or on the right. We've had several people tune in live. So thank you. Oh, thank you, Regina, for joining. Um, and also, I'll post the replay here momentarily. And next week, I'm going to be talking all about delivering that um, exceptional value to your customers, offering extreme value. And when you do that, you keep people buying from you over and over and over again. And customers who come back, gosh, yeah, they, they continue to buy lots from us, right? So in the meantime, have a great week. Thank you for joining and Best Friend Values is where it's at. So thank you, Eden. Thank you. All right. Talk to you soon. Bye-bye.